Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Zero to One Show, where we venture into the Filecoin ecosystem, giving you all the information, stories, uh, best practices, lessons learned for those of you considering or entering the ecosystem. Today we have a very special guest all the way from South America. Uh, one, I don't want to, like your name is so long, I don't want to mispronounce it. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thanks, Parter. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm doing well. What are you guys doing? Excellent. Bob, and as always, uh, is my esteemed co-host, Bob. Bob, what's going on in Amsterdam or Brussels today? Uh, it's not raining for, for, for a change, so that's good. And I'm super excited to hear more about Juan's story as well. Well, let's get right to it. Juan. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people in the community know who you are, but you are representing the, the hope of South America for Filecoin, our first you know, major contributor within the area, a region with a ton of potential, as we all know. So uh, let's start off by just introducing yourself. And I'm always curious on your origin story. How did you get to this point in your journey? All right, Porter. Well, uh... Thanks everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Juan Manuel. I'm from Colombia. I'm going to talk about my, my background. I've been working in the startup and fintech ecosystem for the past seven years, leading areas of sales, marketing, and growth. Uh, my first encounter with blockchain technology was through a company called Lithio, uh, which aims to solve the problem of currency devaluation in emergencies economies like Colombia and most economies in Latin America by providing them access to a strong currency uh, using a stable coin such as USDC uh, for greater financial stability for our users. So that's like my first approach to, to blockchain technology. Um, then how I came to know about Filecoin, well, uh, I, I'm an entrepreneur and my family has been involved in the Latin American audiovisual industry for the past 30 years. So they have witnessed uh, the technological evolution of the industry and all its aspects from these types of files and how they were stored, starting from Betamax, uh, BHS, DVDs, hard drives, till uh, until now to cloud storage. Uh, during the pandemic, I identified that one of the significant challenges during, uh, that my family's company was facing was the storage and transfer of these audiovisual files. So when I joined Lithio, the company I, I started talking, uh, I started to research more about blockchain technology focusing on decentralized storage. I explored a uh, Falcon project, IPFS, protocol labs, uh, and I became like quite interested of how I could connect this technology with the specific problem I want to solve in the audiovisual industry. That basically was the storage transfer and security of, of the files that my, my family's company had. So then I visit this, the Falcon website uh, and I share my business idea in the contact info. Uh, and a few hours later, Bill Strekstein uh, from Falcon Foundation called to my phone. And we have a chat like for 20 minutes. I talk about my idea. And he connect me with a picnic team, specifically with, uh, with the steward. Um, and he recommended me to join to the ESPA program in January of 2023. That was like um, uh, an easy decision for me. I just do all the, the papers. I and in January I was in 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 Falcon. Wow, lots to unpack there. I think you know what I'm curious to learn more about, and I think a lot of the audience here would be fascinated by as well is understanding the Colombian tech market. Like, talk to us about what storage you like is in Colombia? Like, what are the options and alternatives? And, uh, as someone, as an entrepreneur trying to enter this market, you know, tell us about the landscape that's currently in play there. 
yeah, like focusing in Colombia and the cloud market and like uh, all these cloud computing solutions, it has has not the same impact as it have in the US or in Asia or even in Europe. Here in Latin America, these solutions are still uh, getting in into their position. So uh, I, I, I talk with some people that work here in AWS, in Google Cloud, and uh, they are not focused on storage solutions right now. So it's like a really virgin uh, market for telling like that. And uh, specifically in my case, in the audiovisual industry, the way uh, the companies store their files are still in hard drives or yeah, like really big bolts on 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 physic physical. So like the industry is like not prepared for they 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 have a lot a lot of disinformation of of how we can store files nowadays. Is yeah, that, go ahead, Bob. Is that, yeah, is that linked to maybe very um, expensive uh, connectivity in, in South America or, or is that uh, not the case? Yeah, that's, that's really expensive, but uh, in Latin America, there are like uh, one hundred quarter of Amazon Web Services, I think in Sao Paulo, and that's it. Like there's not a lot of presence of these big companies of cloud solutions. So like when you're an entrepreneur looking at the problem uh, and the pain that's being experienced within that market, was there a moment that you can reflect back on where you said, I need to go address this problem? And like, is there a story that you could share there? Yeah, actually, uh, before I get into this startup called Lithio, uh, I want to be on like on the shoes of my user. So I started working in a audiovisual company in a little uh, production company. So uh, one time, uh, I need to send uh, like a, a whole material like three hard drives to one, one, one client. And the only way was with uh, like, I driving my car to this client and go through, through this way. So, because there were like five terabytes of content and it was really painful, like for me, for, and I, I thought that it was really archaic and a really archaic solution that uh, it, it is impossible that it, this still happens, having all the technology that we have right now on the world. So that was like the, when I get convinced, like I need to solve this problem right now. All right. So you're, it's January, 2023. You're at ESPA. Let's pick up the story from there. And what's happened since then? Well, um, I I went to a spa in January of 2023. Then, well, I, I was with my uh, one co-founder that I had. Um, his name was is Jorge. Uh, I met him in in Litio. He was like the head of engineering of the product team of 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 this startup. Uh, so we start working, but then Litio have the notice that. Uh, we were accepted in the YC batch of winter of 2023. Uh, I had like I quit Litio before Diespa, but Jorge was still working at there. So, uh, like in the like a month uh, after he we came back, he decided like to to abandon like this project. So. I was with no technical partner, um, but with a lot of uh, like hope of trying to solve this problem. So he decided to step aside uh, from this project, and I like for continuing wor working to 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 lead you. So uh, that was like. I feel that that time with a lot of uncertainty with what I should do, but I, I didn't want to give up. 
So uh, I became very active on Slack channels, on the events organized by the Falcon Foundation community, webinars with the SP community itself, with people I met during the ESPA from Protocol Lab, from Falcon Foundation, uh, some people from Latin America and some Spanish like people that speak Spanish to tell me about their, their experience. Uh, I started working with many like big projects and big companies such as Convergence uh, with their Cloud Forest. I talked with Fungi Project, uh, a company that's now on Spain, some guys from Puerto Rico, um, and, and Still Dome Cyber, that is one of the companies that best fits with the problem I want to solve in, in Latin America. Uh, so I, I like to start hacking. How can I solve these problems without having this this technical partner? Um, and it it was like a really big journey, like a lot of testing with some of my clients. Um, and right now, like I'm finally landing all all what I need to to move forward with this with this project. You know, that's so fascinating. Uh, I was just listening to a podcast by one of the Sequoia managing directors, and they say they make this statement where every startup is going to go through this emotional ro roller coaster and your fortitude is going to be tested. And I think going into a startup, everyone would acknowledge that statement going in. But then you have that moment like you had where it's like, oh, my God, what do I do? My technical, my partner, my technical leader has abandoned the startup. I mean, I can only imagine like what you, what that must have been like for you, but yet you persevered. And I think that's such a fascinating moment that has led you to now. Uh, and like, so what was going on in your head at that moment? And, you know, what were, what were the things that you were looking towards or that convinced you to press on? Well, uh, as you said, this has been like a really big challenge uh, as it involved like reinventing the real spot mo uh, roadmap several times. Uh, in the sense, I, I start thinking like I need a CTO uh, for create my own infrastructure and so on. Uh, however, the, the ecosystem is usually very collaborative in these aspects. Uh, and at that moment, uh, well, I, I start talking with different SPs. Uh, so I, I like being in a zero to one um, uh, space. I I know one of these projects such as uh, Cloud Forest, and it was really interesting to me. So I start working with that and uh, and all, another guy. So. Uh, for testing their product. Uh, I was also helping them, giving them feedback of the product with real users, with a real a real use case. Uh, so it was like really exciting for me, like know that I, I, I'm not alone in this journey. Like there are people that are working these solutions. I have the, a market, a really interesting market. And there are people with uh, really interesting solutions that, um, that could fit with, with my market. So uh, I started working with different uh, solutions, with different SPs, uh, and I focus myself on sales, on how I can solve the light and problem in the audiovisual industry. So uh, like I want to understand what was my customer, and I start talking with my, my customers, what is their uh, their main problem they want to solve. It is a cost optimization. It is the security of files. It is transferring these files. Uh, so I like to start focusing this uh, on, on this sales side. So I give these insights to these other companies that already have a product so we can make the best solutions for, for our client. Yeah, and that's why I was so excited to have you on the show. Because you have this cathartic moment, you're like, oh my God, what do I do? And then you just leverage the community, built relationships, built integrations, and like you really address the question of can you get started as a one person player? 
And I love the fact that you're living proof that you you have a viable model going forward just by you know grinding it out, focusing on a very specific value add component, and that you're you're doing it. And I think what's important, like what I what why I was so excited to have you on the show is how can you coach other people who may be in a similar spot uh, to get started with your, you know, based on your own approach? Well, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, well, in my in my specific case, uh, as I was telling, Colombia and Latin America, our markets for cloud computing solutions did not have this same impact as in other regions. Talking about Filecoin and, well, blockchain and Web3 is still a very innovative topic for even enterprises uh, in this region. So, like, finding this perfect build, pitch to sell this solution has been a real challenge. Um, as, as I said, uh, the, the ecosystem has been really collaborative. We got a move, like, we have to take a advantage of all the material. If you were in the ESPA, uh, Picnic team is really collaborative. Uh, all the people you know in ESPA, of Protocol Labs, Falco Foundation, like have pushed me when my hands are down or anything, have pushed me to move forward and um, and like to talk with my users. I, see, I think that one of the most important uh, learnings for, for myself in this sales uh, topic is to talk with my users, understand their primary problems and their business needs. Uh, and based on that, we have to take the best approach to talk about this technology that is really new, uh, for example, in Colombia for, for these companies. And how's that going? Uh, well, it's it's going well. It's uh, right now um, we we have been working with two two companies, MGE Entertainment, and another in, uh, government institution here in Colombia. Uh, one is in charge of content distribution of selling audiovisual content to TV channels in Europe, in Asia, in the US, in Latin America. And the other is more like an archival of the film heritage of Colombia. So like these both companies, uh, both operate in the audiovisual industry, but they really have really different needs. So on one hand, one is looking for services that enable them to move their content, uh, like an effective file retrieval feature uh, for their day-to-day -day operations. Meanwhile, the other is looking for collecting. They're, they're in charge for collecting and restoring, like the um, the um, the audiovisual material produced in Colombia, like from TV channels, independent producers, like film projects. So they they're looking more like backups as a service uh, in multiple locations and archival of cold storage. So there have been like different approach that I am working with these companies to how can we make the best pitch to to each one where we have like this customer discovery session and then we come to to this approach. So um, so, so th yeah. thanks to your knowledge of the audio audiovisual sector, you were even able to sell Filecoin storage to government. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, that's I'm, I'm on the process. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the process, but uh, it's really uh, interesting for for them. Like one of the use cases that I emphasize more is the Shaw Foundation, and um, like all all this memorial that they they made with the Holocaust and all this stuff. Uh, they found it really amazing. So that was like my first approach. I think this is going well. Um, and hopefully in a month, I can tell you that this deal was closed. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and one of the questions I had is like, I know every client situation is different. And as you mentioned, like both, both opportunities you're pursuing 
have different pain points, different problems they're trying to solve. How did you go in in preparation for those conversations? And you know, what are the lessons learned that this audience could, could leverage as they approach their own in, initial conversations around, you know, how do you introduce Filecoin to a new market? Well, uh, like one of the best knowledge I, I, I have taken from this experience is that uh, the like for my first approach to Falcon is like we have like a ch cheaper storage. But what I understand by talking what for our users is that pricing is not my statement. My statement must be security, redundancy, uh, like the features that are really valuable for my clients. So like this step by step, I think that the best uh, first approach, like the first approach you, you can make is to understand what is your client looking for? What uh, is the problem you really want to solve to, do, to your client? Understand your customer and what will you solve with this technology? For example, if their problem could be a cost of optimization, file security, backup as a service, uh, I don't know, prevention of cyber attacks, uh, ransomware, etc. cetera. Uh, I think that the uh, understanding this problem before you come with the Falcon solution and talk about Falcon, uh, Falcon must be in your statement, but Falcon is not your your core, your core of the business. Your your value of proposition is your security of the files, and and this way you can decentralize your storage. So. Juan, we have a global audience here on the Zero to One show. We could have viewers from Argentina, India, Southeast Asia, North America. It's, it's It can be pretty diverse on where we get our repeat viewers from. But, you know, given that this could be a global audience, how, you know, what advice do you give someone who's curious about starting off as being a one-person player as yourself? Uh, and like, what is the recipe for them to get started that you would recommend based on your own experience? Well, um, I, I think that the, the best advice I can give you is like focus on the industry uh, that you have a, an easy access and a deep understanding of this problem. Uh, second, uh, you got to talk with your customers. If you don't talk with your customers, you will be biased and, and you need to know which are the problems that, that you want to solve and with, with this technology. Uh, and finally, recognize that your value proposition in the business model that you're building is the security of the files you're storing for customers. Uh, I think that, uh, as I told you initially, I thought my statement should be pricing and cost reduction. But what customers are really looking for at this time, uh, in my specific case here in Colombia, uh, is is security. Like we have a compelling a, a couple of months ago, government institutions were hacked. Um, a healthcare uh, company also was hacked with a ransomware. So there are really big problems and really big challenges in the uh, data market. Uh, in in my case, there are like right now they are giving this importance to to data. So um, I think that, that those were were my three advices. One of the things that you've touched on here is, you know, focus. Uh, and how do you make yourself scalable? What are the kind of guiding principles that you use at this stage of your business? Obviously, if it gets to a critical mass, I'm sure you'll bring on more people, you'll raise capital, and, and you have lots of potential. But for now, how do you make yourself scalable? Um, well, I'm focusing only uh, from a fortune fund only in sales uh, and I think that uh, talking with people, be active on Slack, 
on uh like yes like uh keep moving like keep moving forward the constancy is is really important in in this business uh so to be scalable you need like a, a good team a partner with uh, really professional people um uh, i think that's that's the how you can make yeah so based on your activity today it seems like you've been extremely active in colombia call it since july 2023 beginning of this year how are you feeling about your business your prospects and the impact you can make in the colombia market well I, I think that this is a really big opportunity not only in colombia but in latin america uh and not only in the audiovisual industry uh, like this journey has shown me that there are other industries that really need uh, this this type of solutions even more than the the audiovisual industry. Uh, I, I feel that this will uh, uh, this will be a, a really big game changer here in the data market. Uh, and well, like in my specific case. Uh, going into events of the industry, do you are trying to impact and uh, knowing these people, knowing their problems, uh, is like the best approach you can make to to present this new new technology on on your specific regions. Final question, and then we'll open it up to anyone else on the call. If you were to leave our audience with one piece of advice or insight that you haven't discussed yet so far, what would it be? Uh, take advantage of all, all the Falcon community, all the um, uh, resources that they're giving to you on like the ESPA program, the Slack channel, uh, all YouTube videos, uh, keep, like keep yourself informed of how is moving. This is really moving really fast. And um, we as early adopters, we can make a really big change in, in different regions. So uh, like keep informed, like get in touch with people and know other people projects, share your knowledge. And um, yeah, I think that's the best advice. Bob, question for you. We came in with the open question of, is it possible to be a one-person player in Filecoin today as an SP? Has your stance changed? Well, you didn't know Juan coming into this conversation. No, indeed. Um, I, I think we must have met uh, in, in January, but um, yeah, it, it's been a while. But that said, I mean, most one-person shops or one-person uh, um, companies in this ecosystem typically take the uh, approach, I'm the tech guy and I'll figure it all out. Um, and then it becomes very hard to uh, make a sustainable business model uh, outside of block rewards. And we know where that is going. So um, that brings its own challenges. So what Juan is bringing here is, is a really interesting uh, opposite model where like, okay, I'll have other people in the ecosystem figuring out the tech, I'll work with them and I'll, I'll bring customers. And this is really uh, amazing. Uh, an amazing achievement and again goes to uh, again goes to show how much of an ecosystem uh, power there is around filecoin so you you mentioned espa you mentioned the slack etc this does not happen with closed source solutions where you only have a company to 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 talk to this is a ecosystem that wants to help out and actually it can even uh, be a part of your business model yeah yeah, and you know what's interesting is if Juan started maybe six months before, like so June of last year, would he have gotten as far as he did, as he or I should say as he has? Because only in the last ten months has the ecosystem really stepped up, offering software, offering IaaS, offering all these different solutions that enable someone to focus on a specific swim lane such as sales. So like, I think your timing is really interesting, but I'm so excited that, you know, this can be a reality 
with other people who want to take a similar approach uh, because you can, there's so many players being collaborative uh, and wanting to help you outsource specific work streams uh, within the ecosystem. And yeah, as no, always, uh, okay, go ahead, sorry. Bob. No, I think there's, all, uh, there's also a lot of storage providers who are looking for just people like you that are doing this because they don't have the ambition or they lack the skills or, or, or the market knowledge of a specific industry to really focus on, on the business development side of the house. So, I mean, th this can really work both ways. And I'm looking forward to seeing more people like you uh, offering this kind of uh, business development and sales. Yeah, and one of the pieces of feedback we got from Phil Vegas, we get from most of all of our in-person events, uh, and also we get when people talk about our community, is that you are, in fact, never alone. That's why Slack is such a great and powerful tool. Uh, I think why one of the primary reasons people stick in the ecosystem is just how collaborative it is and how willing everyone is to help. Uh, and you can only come to that conclusion by experiencing it and putting your problems out there or questions out there into the ecosystem. So Bob, it looks like we have a question in the chat. You want to mind uh, reading it for the audience? Well, it's a broader question, not specifically uh, directed to, to Juan or, or related to this discussion, but Nick has a project um, that he wants to talk about. Uh, should we give Nick the floor? Or is it a specific? Yeah, Nick, we'll take that offline. But uh, if anyone else has any like questions for Juan, uh, we'd be happy if, if you put them in the Q&A, we'd be happy to read them out. Q&A, any Q&A? Um, as always, if you do have questions or if you do want to experience the Filecoin community, there's just so many ways to get involved. There's Twitter, aka X. There's Slack. I recommend starting with the Global Storage Provider Community Channel. We have our docs on becoming a, a new Filecoin storage provider. Uh, you can always register for ESPA. You can register for the DStore portal, which is focused on supporting client opportunities that like is a good example of you know, what resources that you could use to replicate what Juan has achieved so far. So as always, uh, you need to experience the magic and to do so, you need to get connected. And if there's not any other questions, I wanna thank Juan for his time. We wish him the best of luck in opening up the Colombian market for Filecoin and our decentralized storage. Please reach out to him directly. You can find him on Slack. Uh, you can find his website at RealSpot. Uh, what's your web, web address? RealSpotMedia.com. RealSpotMedia.com. Yeah. Uh, and if you have questions for Juan, there's plenty of uh, ways to find him. Uh, you can always talk to myself or Bob or Vanessa for any of your community or uh, storage provider questions. And with that, we will see you next month. Thanks for joining everyone.